Hi everyone, this is K. Anamuru, Civil Engineering Department, Institute of Aeronautical Engineering. In this session, we are going to discuss about the cement composition and the types of different types of cement. So coming to the definition of cement here, cement is nothing but it is a binding material. That means it is going to attach with the different materials. Okay, it is having adhesive and cohesive property. Okay, so adhesive means here the molecules of different properties. Suppose if you take the example of um, two aggregates and cement, okay, aggregates and cement, it is going to bind with the aggregates also. And let's say if you take plastic or any other material, cement is going to attach with the um, other building materials also and coming to cohesive property cohesive property is nothing but here cohesive property is nothing but attraction between the same types of molecules same types of molecules like if you take cement particles two cement particle particles so it is if you add water to this particular two particles it is going to bind with the, each other but if you take two aggregates okay if you take two aggregates so if you add water to these aggregates it is not going to bind Right, so that is why cement is having adhesive and cohesive property. The attraction between the um, two different types of molecules, different types of molecules which are having different properties. That is adhesive and cohesive is nothing but it is an attraction between the molecules of same properties. Okay, so this cement is going to have adhesive property and cohesive property. So that is why we are going to call it as a binding material. So here binding material which is used with the stones where we are going to use this particular binding material or cement. Okay, We are going to use this particular cement to bind the stones Okay, and next for bricks for attaching bricks and some of the other building blocks. Okay, So to attach these particular stones or else buildings, building blocks or else bricks okay, we are going to use the binding material whatever the binding material okay and here the principal material in the compounds uh, in the in the cement is compounds of lime okay so this is the principal material compounds of lime is a major material which is present in the cement and in that majorly calcareous cement okay so that is why it is going to i mean it is going to be called as a calcareous cement because the lime is also called as a calcareous materials okay and next different types of cement coming to different types of cement here we are having hydraulic cement and non hydraulic cement okay these are the two different types of cements and example for hydraulic cement is opc okay different types of normal cements are there right so that is the um, normal example for hydraulic cement that means when you add water to the cement that is going to react with the water and forming new products right so that is hydraulic cement and next one is non hydraulic cement okay that is not going to react with the water okay that is the example for this particular non hydraulic cement is plaster of paris okay next coming to the portland cement definition clearly so here it is going to have the different types of materials in the major materials are calcareous materials okay so calca calcareous materials and argillaceous materials okay these are the two different types of materials majorly present in the cement so examples for calcareous cement or um, calcareous materials are limestone or chalk okay this is the one of the example for calcareous material i will show you the picture also next slide and next coming to the argillaceous materials the example is clay and shea okay this is the example for argillaceous materials so by combining these two materials we are going to get the portland cement okay so normally the basic cement basic type of cement is portland cement so in portland cement we will be having two major materials that is calcareous materials and argillaceous materials okay by combining these two materials we are going to get the portland cement okay and next here you can see the picture of limestone which is available in available naturally okay so these are the different types of these are the different types of uh, stones okay that is limestone and next one this is the argillaceous material example shale okay so this is the mm, normal stone which we are going to find in a earth okay so now coming to the chemical composition of portland cement so here we will be having different chemicals in the manufacturing of cement so the first one is 
calcium oxide okay this is the major material calcium oxide is an example for um, calcareous materials right so this is this will be obtained from the limestone okay and the percentage of this particular calcium oxide is 60 to 67 percentage okay so this is the major percentage which is going to occupy in the manufacturing of cement okay and next the function of this particular cal calcium oxide okay so it is going to control the strength okay so by using this particular calcium oxide we can control the strength whatever the required strength we need okay that strength will be controlled by particular using by using calcium oxide and next soundness soundness is nothing but it is going to represent the um, condition of the um, particular material like here we are going to talk about the cement right so here whether the cement is um, sound i mean that means the the properties of cement are good or not good, good or not so that we are going to represent with the soundness so here especially the soundness will be represented by using the expansion of the cement okay so if is if it is going to expand more then we are going to get some cracks right so then we are going to call the particular cement is a unsound cement so the particular property soundness will be controlled by using calcium oxide chemical okay and next if you use less amount of calcium oxide in while manufacturing of cement then that is going to reduce the strength and setting time okay so the strength will be reduced if you use less amount of calcium oxide and that is also going to affect the setting time of cement so i am going to discuss about this particular term in the next sessions ma okay and next coming to the excess amount of calcium oxide suppose if you use excess amount of, i mean we have to use up to only 60 to 67 percentage right so if you use more than 67 percent what is going to happen that is going to make the cement unsound that means the it may get cracks if you if you may get cracks in the cement paste after casting the um, components okay so that is going to make the cement unsound okay so i am going to discuss about the setting time and soundness about these terms in the next session clearly and next one silica dioxide okay sio2 so next chemical is silica dioxide and the percentage of silica dioxide is 17 to 25 percentage okay we have to maintain the um, particular range that is 17 to 25 percentage and due to this particular addition of the chemical we are go i mean we are going to get the strength that means this particular silica dioxide is going to increase the strength okay and it is going to affect the strength of the cement okay and suppose if you use excess amount of silica dioxide then what is going to happen it is going to cause the slow setting that means after adding the water the cement is going to change the state from the um, plastic state to i mean elastic and plastic state to complete hardened state right so that time will be reduced if you use i mean that time is going to be affect uh, by using this particular silica dioxide okay and next aluminum trioxide al2o3 okay the percentage of percentage of this particular chemical is 3 to 8 percentage okay so we have to maintain this particular percentage and it is responsible for quick setting that means after adding water within few minutes within less time it is going to convert from it is going to convert from plastic state to hardened state okay that is what quick setting here okay depending upon the type of cements and i mean depending upon the chemical composition that means this particular aluminum trioxide the setting time will be different okay so about these properties we can discuss in the further classes clearly okay and next excess amount of this particular aluminum trioxide okay al2o3 is going to lower the strength okay the strength of the particular cement will be reduced if you add excess amount of aluminum like chemical okay and next material is ferrous oxides okay if we to o3 it is a chemical name and the percentage of ferrous oxide is 0.5 to 6 percentage okay and due to addition of this particular ferrous oxide the color will be changed okay whatever the color we are getting okay for cement that is gray color okay that will be affected with the addition of this particular ferrous oxide okay and helps in fusion okay it is also going to helps in fusion fusion is nothing but here the burning process okay if you add correct amount of this particular ferrous oxide the particular burning process of uh, chem chemical manufacturing will be done smoothly okay so it is going to help in a fusion okay and next one next chemical composition is magnesium oxide okay the percentage of magnesium oxide is 0.4 0.5 to 0.4% sorry 0.5 to 
four percentage. Okay, so it is going to impact the color and hardness. Okay, so by addition of this particular magnesium oxide, we can give the color. Okay, whatever the color we are getting for cement, that will be affected by this magnesium oxide. Okay, and next hardness. Hardness is nothing but here resistance to scratching or else indentation. So when you try to scratch a particular material okay it is not we are not going to get the scratch on the material it is going to resist okay that resistance will be measured by using this particular hardness okay so due to addition of this particular magnesium oxide the hardness will be affected okay the hardness will be i mean due to the i mean the this percentage if you add excess amount of magnesium oxide or else if you add less amount of magnesium oxide it is going to affect the hardness it may reduce or it may be increase okay Next, excess amount of magnesium oxide. If you add excess amount of magnesium oxide, that is going to be in a free state. That means after adding water, it is not going to react with the any other chemicals or else in water. Okay, if you add excess amount of magnesium oxide, that is not going to react with the water or else any other chemicals. Right, so it will be in a free state without reacting with any other chemicals. Okay. So, I due to that free, I mean free magnesium oxide, it is going to crack the, it is going to affect the um, cement with cracks. That means this particular magnesium oxide, whatever the excess amount of magnesium oxide is there, that is going to cause the cracks in a cement. Okay, so I am concrete also. Okay, due to the due to this particular magnesium oxide, the cracks will be developing in a cement. In a, I mean, in a cement and concrete, okay, in both materials. And next, weakens the cement, okay. It is going to reduce the properties like strength. Strength will be affected, okay. So that is what the function of the magnesium oxide here. And next, sulfur, okay, S four three. If you take this chemical, the percentage will be around one to two percentage, okay. And next, this is going to make the cement sound. That means the expansion will be reduced and the cracks will be re reduced. That means the we can make the cement in idea. I mean, we can make the cement ideal. Okay. That means without any failures. Okay. We can reduce the failure of the cement. Okay. That is what the function of sulfur trioxide. Okay. And next one, alkalis. Okay. This this is these are also called as a residues. Ma. Okay. This is the percentage of this alkalis will be zero point four two. 1.3. So in this alkalis, we'll be having sodium oxide and potassium oxide. Okay, so these are the some of the alkalis which we are going to add. Okay, this will be acting as a residues in the cement. Okay, and excess of this particular residues or else alkalis will be causing the efflorescence and cracks. Okay, efflorescence is nothing but here on after casting the components, uh, cement concrete components, we are getting white colored powder on the component. Okay, you may observe in your uh, homes or else uh, structures also. So after casting the components, we will be getting uh, we will be getting the white colored powder on the surface. Okay, that powder white colored powder is called as a efflorescence. Okay, that is also one of the failures which causes the which is going to affect the strength or else performance of the structures. Okay, so excess amount of this particular residues. Will be affecting the efflorescence. Okay, it is going to cause the efflorescence and cracks. Okay, cracks are also developing in the cement or concrete. Okay, and next here setting. Okay, setting of cement refers to the changes of cement paste from fluid to rigid state. Okay, so initially we will be having cement powder, right? So in that powder, when you add water to the cement, then this cement powder is going to react with the Water, right? So by reacting with the water, it is going to change its uh, state from the plastic state, that is fluid state to rigid state. That means hardened state. Okay. So that is what the setting setting of um, cement here. Okay. So that is called as a setting. So next, the term hardening. So here, hardening is different and setting is different now. So setting is nothing but change of state from the plastic state to um, rigid state, or else hardened state is called a setting, right? But here hardening is nothing but yet it refers to the gain of strength to a set cement paste. Okay, after setting of cement, it is going to gain some strength. Okay, or else the development of strength we will be observed in the cement or concrete paste, right? So that gaining of strength is called as a hardening over here. Okay, so this is what the difference between the setting and hardening here. Okay.
Uh, next here, the composition of cement clinker. Coming to the composition of cement clinker. So after formation of uh, this clinker material in manufacturing process, what is the what are the different compounds which are forming in the clinker? Okay, that we are going to know. So here, whatever the compounds which are formed during the chemical reaction after hard after hydration process, we'll be getting some compounds now. Okay, those compounds will be called as a box compounds. Okay, here the box compounds will be formed during the reaction after reaction with the water. Right. So these compounds will have the properties of setting and hardening in the presence of water. Okay, whatever the compounds which are formed by adding the water will be having the properties of setting and hardening. That means it is going these these particular compounds are going to change the property I mean state of cement from fluid state to hardened state, and the strength development will be also affected by using these compounds. Okay. So here coming to the composition of this particular clinker. Is the first one is tricalcium silicate. Okay, so the formula for chemical formula for tricalcium silicate is three CaO SaO two. Okay, this is tricalcium silicate, and the symbol of this particular tricalcium silicate is C three S. Okay, and next composition is dicalcium silicate. Okay, this is the second major component, second major compound which is forming in the during the reaction with the water so the chemical formula for this dicalcium silicate is 2CaO SaO2 okay this is the chemical representation and this is your symbol okay C2S and next third major component is tricalcium aluminate okay and the chemical formula for this tricalcium aluminate is 3CaO Al2O3 okay and next the chemical symbol will be C3A Okay, and next the fourth major compound is tetracalcium aluminoferrate. Okay, this is the fourth major comp compound which is forming during the reaction with the water, and the formula of this particular tetracalcium aluminoferrate is 4CaO Al2O3 and Fe2O3. This is the chemical formula, and the representation will be C4AF. Okay, this is the symbols. Okay, so these are the four major compounds which are forming in the hydration process of cement and these particular four compounds are compounds are called as a box compounds coming to the each and every compound properties coming first one is tricalcium silicate that is c3s so it will be a good cementing material okay so if you add correct proportion of this compound tricalcium silicate so we will be getting good cementing material that means the binding property of this particular Compound is very good compared to other other compounds. Okay, we have four different compounds, right? So compared to three, I mean three other compounds, the binding property here cementitious material is, is nothing but which is having the property of binding like cement. Okay, that is called as a cementing cementing material. So this tricalcium silicate is a good cementing material which is having proper binding properties. Okay. And next, well burnt cement. Okay, if you have proper uh, composition, proper compound composition of this particular tricalcium silicate, the burning process of cement will be very good. That means the reaction, the burning will be um, smoothly done. Okay, while manufacturing. Okay, and next, it is about twenty-five to fifty percentage of cement. Okay, the percentage of tri tricalcium silicate is twenty-five to fifty percentage of total weight of cement. Okay, out of hundred percent, we'll be having twenty-five to fifty percentage. Okay, so normally about forty percent. Okay, on an average, on an average, we are going to take twenty-five to forty fifty percentage. Okay, normally we can take around forty percent also. Okay, next, it makes the clink. Clinker easier to grind. Okay, due to this particular tricalcium silicate, the grinding property will be very easy. Okay, so the grinding property will be very easy by adding this tricalcium silicate. Okay, and next one is increases resistance to freezing and thawing. Okay, so here freezing and thawing is nothing but if you take uh, if you go to cold climatic conditions. So suppose this is the cement which is casted, right? So after casting the cement, we will be we will be having some moisture content inside the inside the cement particles, right? So when you go to cold climate conditions, there the water will be freezed if you decrease the temperature. So the moisture content which is present inside the cement paste, okay, that is going to freeze. So whenever the water is going to freeze, then the volume will be increases around ten percentage, 
right so so suppose these are the two particles okay these are the three, three cement particles and this is the moisture content inside the cement particles so when you decrease the warm temperature so then due to the decrease in temperature the moisture which is present inside the cement waste paste is going to increase the volume i mean it is going to freeze right so due to that freezing of moisture content the volume will be increased so whenever it is going to whenever it is try to increase the volume then this particular freeze moisture content is going to push the surrounding particles away from the away from each other so due to that particular reaction due to that particular process the temperature stresses will be developing okay so that effect will be reduced if you use correct amount of dry calcium silicate okay so increases the resistance to freezing and thawing okay so if you add correct amount of uh, dry calcium silicate then the resistance to freezing and thawing that means this uh, freezing the freezing of moisture content or else uh, thawing is within, but if you reduce the moisture content then the volume will be reduced again so due to that particular um, periodical change in the particular uh, moisture uh, moisture uh, volume that will be reduced due to the um, correct proportion of dry calcium silicate okay and next hydrates rapidly so hydration hydration is nothing but here reaction with water okay reaction of cement particles with the water is called as a hydration here okay so if you add this if you going to develop this dry calcium silicate in a correct proportions then the hydration process will be done properly okay uh, rapidly okay and next one generates high heat and develops an early hardening hardness and strength okay so due to this particular dry calcium silicate it is going to generate high amount of heat compared to other compounds okay the generation of heat is very high compared to other compounds and develops an high early hardness okay the hardness will be developed in early stages itself okay this is this is going this is will be i mean this will be compared with the other compounds now okay not only with the single compound but by comparing with the other compounds we are going to um, define these properties okay and strength okay so strength will strength is also going to develop in a um, early stages itself okay after casting the cement based cement or concrete that is going to i mean develop the strength in early days that means in one day within one day or else within three days the maximum strength will be attained okay and next heat of hydration okay heat of hydration will be around 500 joules per gram okay for 1 gram of uh, cement powder it is going to generate 500 joules of heat okay so these are the different properties of these are the different properties of dry calcium silicate okay so if you add correct proportion of dry calcium silicate this is going to affect the following properties okay these properties okay thank you like share and subscribe hit the bell icon for more updates